We are aboard the control cabin of the Canadian Coast Guard hovercraft Moitel. And here is a view of the control cabin cockpit. Captain, we got a report of zero two swimmers that appear to be struggling, haven't moved much in the last 30 minutes off of Baby Island, which is southern Whidbey Island now, copy. Roger, Captain. Coast Guard standing by 2 2 one pit. So hey everybody, we are here with Paul Tobin of the Canadian Coast Guard. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we are sitting aboard the uh, hovercraft, the Canadian Coast Guard hovercraft Moitel. Um, tell me a little bit about the mission of the hovercraft in service with the Canadian Coast Guard. Yeah, the Canadian Coast Guard, we started hovercraft trials to see if it was a fit for our, our, uh, our, 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 our industry. And 1968 was our first hovercraft arrived at the YVR in Vancouver Airport. And it was situated there because of high density population and the significant uh, tidal mud flats. So the tides can go for several kilometers. So there are kind of stations out there as a contingency in case of an airplane ditching. Uh, it's mud, so it was, we're the only vessel that could get in at, at, at a fast response rate. Right. Um, so we're there to service that. Uh, we're, we're, we're multi. Uh, Tasking, we do uh, scientific work for uh, with different research outfits with the University of British Columbia and the National Research Center uh, Council of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, we do uh, water sampling monitor in the in the in the lower gulfs. Uh, we're looking for microplastics. We do mud sampling. We look for the minerals that are in in, in some of the you know whatever the scientific scientists want to do. Mm -hmm. We uh, we can stage the craft with a scientific uh, pod that all the all the equipment is in there with the several scientists that do the monitoring. Mm -hmm. We also do uh, some seismic recovery with probes in some of the uh, mud flat areas that they're measuring for earthquakes and monitoring. And the probes sit out there, and we we go out and we pick pick the probes up, and they get replenished. So. We do that, and we also do navigation aids work. Uh, we can do the lighter stuff, like in uh, the, some of the rivers and tributaries in the, off the Fraser, where the ships can't get into. We do service of the nav aids. Uh, um, we deploy. A, we have a five-ton crane lifting capacity on board the front fore deck, and we can. We'll just go up there over, over a period of days and, and do all the maintenance and recovery and, and reposition the buoys where they need to be. And, but our primary role for the hovercraft station at Sea Island is uh, search and rescue. That's our that's our, our mandate, mm -hmm. and we work with the uh, rescue center uh, joint uh, uh, out of Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, when the call comes in, they deploy the assets. So if it's in our area, we operate our, our operating area is a 60 nautical mile radius of the Vancouver airport. So like, for instance, we're 60 nautical miles from our base now. So technically we're, we're still in the search and rescue zone. And uh, we go as far north as Campbell River and far south, we do some joint uh, uh, partnership with uh, the US Coast Guard. We, we go down to Orcas Island, we has been down to Seattle. I've taken this craft up to Ketchikan, Alaska for some uh, uh, joint uh, training with the, with the different countries. Wow. So yeah, but our primary uh, role is uh, is a search and rescue. Uh, like I said, we've been there since 1968. We've performed 20,000 rescues since 1968. Amazing. Um, we average about uh, 300 calls a year, mm -hmm. rescue calls at our station. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're fully capable with, uh, we have a, uh, uh, we are the only dive, Coast Guard dive uh, uh, team in Canada. Okay. Coast Guard predominantly doesn't dive, but because of our unique platform and speed, they've, uh, kitted us out and trained uh, our divers, which are uh, called uh, penetration diving. So they don't wear scuba, they're actually attached to a physical umbilical cord and we have unlimited air supply. So it's, it's really safe that we do. The training program to be a diver here is 16 weeks long. Wow. It's kind of like a Navy SEAL kind of program. They, we pick the fit people and we, we have our own training, sure. uh, training uh, 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 system that we use. Right. Uh, the pilots and navigators, they usually come out of the Coast, Canadian Coast Guard College or they've gotten a career in the marine industry and they have the license to be able to 
uh, actually operate the hovercraft and we train them in our own in-house program because there's no re school you can go to learn to drive hovercraft and we're, we're kind of the only people that have one i was just going to say that yeah. because uh you and i had talked just previously before this recording about uh hovercrafts around the world uh you know it, it, in england they were used quite quite a lot uh at one time but I don't think that there's many of them. Uh, no, I, I was a, I left the Coast Guard for ten years, and I went to Alaska. Uh, they had a big similar hovercraft to this that they purchased that was built in Seattle, but they didn't have anybody to run it. So I went up in uh, 2006, and I started the program. And the same thing they were doing. Uh, There's a lot of uh, native villages in the area, but no way to get to the hospital. Ah. So there was a major runway, uh, ten thousand foot runway. The life flights could come in. So. My job was to get the uh, hovercraft, same uh, configuration as this, and, and get the people trained up. So they, we've operated about 10 years in Alaska in remote villages getting people to hospital. Wow. And otherwise, uh, there was no way to get them out. So people right. were, it would, uh, the communities were not happy about that. Sure. They, they had to be able to get to hospital. And they, you couldn't build dock because of the uh, environmental impact. And the air was super sensitive areas for, and, and hovercraft are, are environmentally friendly. There been so, so many studies on this. There's no bank erosion. Uh, there's no acoustic sound in the water. Uh, and uh, like this, the sea lions and the, and the sea otters, our, the, our, our frequency is up, uh, out of their hearing range. So basically they can't hear us. And we've did studies in Alaska with, we had fish and wildlife observers on board for about a year. Okay. Because they were kind of worried about we're in a sensitive area. Sure. And how the environmental impact was going to be. Yep. And the conclusion was there was no impact of hovercraft, right? So whales and all that kind of stuff, they, 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 they we, were, we were no impact. Excellent. Like a ship with a hull and water propellers or significant risk, we fly over the top. So right, right. And anything about a four to five foot obstacle, that's we're totally amphibious. So when boats are in trouble, if they go grounding in rocks, that's that's what we can get into. Where other ships can't go in to do the rescues. So right. Yeah. You know. That's interesting. So now, so where are these? hovercraft built and are there many vendors for them because no uh there's the primary builder like the technology was uh, during the second world war mm -hmm. where they came out with a commercial hovercraft the first one was called a, a saunders row it was an aircraft company built and was called srn so the first crop the craft that we had at stationed at vancouver Air, airport was uh, srn6 okay those were deep turbine helicopter powered engines they were loud noisy fast but um development through the years uh, the Coast Guard needed a better platform and needed redundancy so they went to a multi-engine configuration the new design was come out what came out was called the AP 188 there was a smaller version this is called an AP 188-400 okay which is a larger bigger vessel this is purposely built for the Canadian Coast Guard ah because we learned over the time when we had the original uh, AP 188 we need modifications. So we put in our input and we designed this vessel to be multitasking. Uh, the company uh, predominantly builds them in, is in England, mm -hmm. in, the, in the, the Isle of Wight. Okay. It was called Hoverwork, uh, and then became Griffin Hoverwork. They're the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be Westlands Aerospace, but they've migrated over the years. The company was bought out by Griffin Hoverwork. Sure. Um, they're operating, uh, there's an operation in Kazakhstan okay. in the Caspian Sea. Uh, they're really good because the Caspian Sea is really shallow, so there's a lot of multi-oil uh, platforms. So the craft is, is a, a logistics platform that goes and moves people, supplies, and it's fast. Because, and when a helicopter lands, they need a standby vessel. But the Caspian is so shallow in the in the north end, they can't get a, sh a vessel in a conventional vessel. But when the helicopter, in case it ditches, so the hovercraft goes, helicopter lands, the craft goes away. So Interesting. It's all, it's all health and safety. Right. The other operation the military has them in. Um, in Korea. Okay. South Korea has a couple of ones similar to this. They're just outfitted for military. They have weapons on board and gun turrets and stuff. So sure. there's a couple operating over there. Uh, in Indonesia, there's a, there's a, another hovercraft operation there. Similar vessels, AP-188 design. So yeah, they're not far. There's other different types of vessels like uh, uh, Indian Navy has a lot of uh, uh, Coast Guard for patrol, for border patrol, mm -hmm. but they're smaller hovercraft. And I think there's probably about 50 or 60 smaller hovercraft over there. Okay. So, but it's still the same designer, Griffin Hoverwork. Right. Builds all of them in the world now. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, it, it, this, uh, this hovercraft uh, was built in what year? 
this was built in 2014 okay. and 15. Okay. This is Moitel, the newer one. Mm -hmm. The one we have right now back at the airport, our, our search and rescue vessel today, mm -hmm. was built in 1998 and that was built in Canada in, by a company called Hike Metals. Mm. So they tried to do, they built two of them in, in Canada under license, like supervised from Griffin Hoverworth, the sure. manufacturer. Sure. Because uh, uh, the, the talent was there for the welding procedures and stuff. Okay. Uh, the reason why this was built in, in um, this one was built in England. It was it was just a it was a contract uh, thing, but predominantly sure. they're built. We try to get them built in Canada mm -hmm. under license from the manufacturer, and and that's just an easy procedure to do. They just send some reps here. They do some quality control. But, right, yeah. right, interesting. And so this particular, talk to me about some of the nuances of operating a hovercraft because. Um, Obviously, anything on the water is going to take a lot of maintenance and, and what Sure, yeah. So, like, I, I relate it to anything high speed. If you got a, a race car, Formula One race car, it's high speed. Right. Indianapolis, five, high speed, right? So, yeah. you know what those people are doing. Yeah. Pit stops, maintenance, 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 right? right? It's the same thing for us with the hovercraft. Anything high speed. Yeah. We have a fully staffed uh, hangar in, uh, at YBR at the airport. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a full uh, licensed engineering team. Uh, there's uh, six engineers at the station, and uh, there's always one. When we go back today, there'll be one in the hangar. We'll be getting maintained when that. We always have two two ready to go. And when, when we just kind of uh, mitigate the, the workload, so we, at the end of the day, it's always ready to go back in service. So it's always constant maintenance. Right. So for for instance, uh, say this trip was an hour or half over, so three hours. We'll probably do maybe an hour maintenance on it, right? We'll check the oils, and we, we're, there's a lot of turning parts. So there's a lot of inspections. Right. Uh, all our engineers' background are all from the aviation industry, so we're used to being tightened with inspections compared to the marine business because mm -hmm. it's a just different type of vessel. So we learned over the years with experience that uh, we do, uh, it's called block checks. So uh, every 50 hours, we've got it down to certain mandatory things that we have to do with life cycle management and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we're, we're constantly maintaining and we do uh, our own self refits in the fall and, and uh, just after Christmas. Okay. So we they're about six weeks that we take and we pull the engines out, we've changed propellers and about six, six, yeah, six to eight weeks and then it's ready. And we bring another one in by we have to we usually have both crafts all serviceable full time for the busy season which is SAR season which is right after May long weekend mm -hmm. up until Labor Day so there's a lot of boating activity and and beaches and you know a lot of people on the water right at those periods so we got to make sure our craft are fully functional and all our staff are all trained ready to go into the season so right that's that's kind of what we're doing yeah yeah you mentioned uh, high speed okay. um, what are we talking about. Uh, I've, had, I've had this craft up to 64 knots, but generally it's about 50 knots, right? Which is about 100 kilometers an hour. That's a, so, that's extremely yeah, impressive. That's why we're at the airport 60 nautical miles. We can be anywhere in that 60 miles in one hour. In one hour, right? Yeah. So yeah. That's that, kind of that's kind of how we're doing it. Though. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, tell me about what the future is for the hovercraft um, community for the. Coast Guard. Yeah, we're just working on a new uh, procurement deal. Like in the government, uh, things that are all uh, defined, the money's allotted. But uh, we just start launched the program. We're going to get some new procurement of new craft. They'll look probably look the same. They'll just be upgraded technology. And uh, I think that the, the go date is 2027 or 2028 to have them here. So nice. You know, that's that's kind of how we're working it right now. So you mentioned that this particular hovercraft was built specifically for the Coast Guard. Yes. Um, is in operate in your time in operating this hovercraft and the fact that it is a Canadian Coast Guard specific design is there anything that you have identified that you would change uh, or yeah we, yeah we did we actually we identified the propellers uh, that we originally had in the craft were uh, they were Hoffman propellers made in Germany they were wooden they're old technology okay. they were not reliable hmm. uh, the overhaul costs were uh, were very expensive hmm. and the, the company was in Germany so we had to deal with the you know the with the uh, the, the uh, we call it money rates oh the exchange the exchange rates right. that kind of right. stuff and lead times and bureaucracy with paperwork and everything right and they didn't have a good reputation just the propellers were susceptible to cracks so I see they weren't reliable for us so we went uh, developed we asked every uh, helic uh, 
propeller manufacturer in the world. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a hovercraft, uh, hovercraft propeller? And funny enough, uh, Ohio is co a company called Hartzell Propellers, which is an aircraft company. They made the first propeller for Wilbur and Orville Wright. It was a Hartzell Walnut factory. It was right next door to Wilbur and Orville Wright. No so kidding. they built them a propeller. So that's how they started. Okay. But we've got these new propellers that are aircraft designed. They're off of the uh, Dornier 328 okay. aircraft, and they're fully functional and are maintenance. We don't even look at them anymore. So we identified that years ago as a, as a, as a flaw of the hovercraft sure. because of our downtime. Sure. But the new propellers we got on, are they're, they're last of 5,000 hours, and we don't even look at them anymore. Beautiful. They're carbon fiber lighter yep. higher tech and cheaper to operate awesome yeah our overall awesome. costs are fifteen thousand dollars compared to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars with the german wow course. yeah wow sure. that's a huge and difference that, that was the only thing uh uh, we'd like a bit more. We've identified the power plants. We'd like a little bit more power mm -hmm. uh, on the craft. But the new craft that are going to be cured, we've already identified the bugs, and we always relay that to the manufacturer. Sure. Like, okay, we need to improve on this to get serviceability up. So they've been working with us. Our history with uh, Griffin Hoverwork has been over, you know, over 30 years. Right. A relationship. Right. right. So right. They, they listen to us because we're one of their, you know, prime operators and now they're taking that information to other countries like the korean navy has hovercraft so they've kind of taken what we've learned mm -hmm. and uh canada is really collaborative dealing with uh other countries to help right so yeah. that's you know one reason i went to help the americans with the u.s coast guard awesome they, they didn't have any thing on the books for hovercraft right and we kind of wrote the book for them nice there, so. nice yeah. uh and one thing I didn't ask you is what kind of range are we looking at? It, it, we talked about the speed, but uh, oh yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're, we can go uh, ten hours endurance. So like uh, ten hours at sixty knots is uh, you know it's six hundred miles. Yeah, going a day. Wow. I went to catch can. I took this craft to catch can Alaska, and I think it was all in. I think it was like seventeen hours wow. right, to get there. So it was quite a ways. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, but like you say, we're we're high speed. Yep. Fast deployment when they need us for emergencies, and that's we show up. Beautiful. Yeah, safety first service always. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Wonder, wonderful way to end this yeah. interview. Okay, perfect. Paul, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you.